Hello everyone, this is Paul Frank, your Director of Career Development. Today I'm going to give you an updated version on how to use Transaction Desk to write an offer uh, and to use a, a thin assign. So first of all, you find a home that your client really wants. You pull it up on the MLS, you click this little button that says Transaction Desk. Now when it pops up, I'm going to use the wizard um, and it's going to ask me for um, a template. So most your company should have templates set up. If not, you're going to want to go in and do those. It'll save you a lot of time because it will automatically bring in the basic forms that you're going to use. And then you'll have to um, customize it for whatever that listing is. So let's say it has a septic system. Let's say it's a farm. It has a well, you know, that kind of stuff. So you're always going to want to use the wizard and uh, we're going to click create. Now this is going to pop up with the basic general information. Now, first thing I want to tell you is don't ever click this save and exit. If you click save and exit, it'll yes, it'll save it and it'll go back to the dashboard. Then you're going to have to go through all of these just to make sure just to fill out the form. So basically what the wizard does is it's taking you right down the list with this. Okay. So first thing we want to do is verify that this information is correct and accurate and then um, click um, put in your purchase price so 325 hit next purchase price um, purchase and sale uh, we don't fill that out because we don't have that yet but oh no it's today right Duh. Offer expiration. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to fill out this form strategically. I'm just teaching you how to fill it out online. So we're just going to go one day. Mutual acceptance we don't have. Closing we don't have. Well, yeah, let's go closing date. Let's just go 30 days out. Pick the 27th session on the same date. Hit next. And then it'll list the owner, the broker, all that good stuff, who the broker is. Now we want to add the buyer. So um, add buyer. Okay, first name is buyer. Last name is buyer. Isn't that cool? Now I typically don't add anything else in there. I just kind of leave that blank and then I will save it. Uh, and then you see buyer buyer has been added and you just keep adding as many buyers as there are okay now remember I talked about the template when you pull up the template it pulls up the generic um, folders or files that you need now if you don't need these you can delete these right so I can just hit delete um, delete if for some reason you need to add additional uh, forms on, you simply click add. <clears throat> now you can search it by uh, form number or whatever. I just do all statewide forms. Go pick the form that you want. Let's say it's a septic. So we'll add septic, just click, click add. And it'll add it to the folder down at the bottom. Uh, and then to, if you want to move it up, because you're like me, you want all of the forms to be in order, then um, just grab it on the left and put it wherever you want. So then you just click on the form and then fill the form out, however you want to write the offer. Um, I'm just going to click some buttons here. Earnest money, 3000 uh, and um, T and E, we'll just put T and E, T and E, all right, all that good stuff, just mark them all, we're going to go crazy, okay, and then any forms that you need down here, all that good stuff, okay, now it says save and exit, um, you can click that, that's fine, it sends you back to the form, 
Um, I just always got in the habit of um, saving it before I exited, exited. So I would go save, save, and then file exit. And the reason why is because a lot of times it gets in that loop. You saw that little um, countdown thing. Sometimes it just gets stuck in the loop and everything you've done up to that point goes away. Okay. So you're going to keep filing and filling on all these forms, delete the ones you don't need, and then we're going to go next. Okay. And these are all the um, forms that the um, listing agent has uploaded. So uh, we'll get to those later. So you can check them out, pull them up, check them out, see what you want to do, um, and then hit done. Now, once these are all up and ready, you'll see them in the forms, and you can click forms, pull them up. If you need to make changes, you can make changes. You can do all that good stuff, okay? Now, we're going to go to signings. We're going to add, and we're just going to put this test 1000. Click save, and then it's going to click test 1000, okay? So we're going to add documents if you're using documents in this transaction. So we stayed in this transaction. We didn't get out of it. We stayed in that transaction. Then we can just start adding forms. Okay. Now, any forms that are MLS forms will automatically put the signature where it needs to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, if we want to use their forms or we want to like initial the legal, we can add the legal, we can add the seller disclosure. You can add the other ones too if you want to initial them, totally up to you, okay? So then you'll see documents and forms. All the documents are here. Now this is your last opportunity to check to make sure that everything is good, right? So go through, make sure all the signature or all the boxes are filled out, everything's good. So go through there and check all of that. Okay. Now, next thing we're gonna do, uh, click next. Oop. Okay, we're gonna add signers, add participants. You can add yourself, create a new one from transaction debt from the transaction or add new so I'm gonna add from the transaction and I'm gonna put buyer buyer okay now the thing is in mr. buyer buyer you'll see there's a little red mark because I didn't add their email address um, to the uh, prior when I was doing the um, wizard because I don't want that information to show up on the purchase and sale agreement, okay? So, and then we can update transaction contact, okay? They were a remote signer. If you wanna give them a pin, you can give them a pin. If, uh, you know, buyer buyer has a special way they wanna do their name, all that good stuff, you can put that in there and do all that and then click uh, oops, custom. Let's do buyer, buyer. Okay, and then once you see we got rid of all the red on there, the save button became live. So we click save. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do is go to tools and then um, add the buyer. So you'll see since it's an MLS document, it automatically added the sign here and the date. Um, so go through, make sure all those are there. You're all good, all good. And then once we get to the legal description, or if you have anything that is a um, an optional signature, like the FERPTA form um, and boxes that need to be checked, then you can add those. It's simple to do. If I wanna add a um, tools, I go text line and then I can add that into the text ID number and text line. I can add it to the address. If I want to do um, a checkbox, let me 
Let's see, I could just check that here. Okay, and then add the signature. So sign here. And then I always like to separate the date because I don't like them to be together, but that's just personal preference. Okay, all that good stuff. Um, you, you know, check the boxes you want. Those should already be checked, but the signatures that you want to do. Okay, utilities, all that. Then we'll get to the legal description. So the legal description also needs to be initialed. So we're just going to drag that over there. And then we probably want to add a date in there too. Um, same thing. Uh, we'll do both these. I realize there was two of them, but that's okay. Pretty simple. And then the Form 17 is a great example of... Um, you know, signing the receipt of it. So you got the receipt, you sign that, and then there's the waiver, and then the right is received. So if you want to revoke your right to, or waive your right to revoke the offer, you can add the additional one there, and you're good to go. Okay. So we are all done doing that piece of cake. Again, this is your last time to make sure you have all the signatures. Everything's there. You're all good. All hunky-dory. And then hit next. It'll ask you for finalized sightings and setups. Um, you're all good. You can put an expiration date on there. It's quite a ways out. It's a month out. But, uh, you can change that if you want. You can add in custom verbiage. I typically don't do that because if this email is going to get lost, so are your directions. So I always send them a separate email from us, you know, from my email system. That way they get the email that says, hey, I just sent you an AthenaSign. Please let me know if you have any issues signing it or need any help with it. That way they're getting two emails that said they got it. So I'm going to click send and believe me, there is a buyer at buyers.com email out there that gets a ton of my practice stuff. So all done, all set, it'll come up and you, um, it'll give you updates on what's going on. So as buyer does it, um, it'll say, okay, buyer reviewed, buyer signed, everything's sent back and you're all good to go. Now, for some reason, you have to resend it. You can click here. Resetting completely resets everything. If you have a duplicate, you can do that. Um, and then any signing details. And then if you want to totally get rid of this, you can do that too. So, okay. I hope that was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help.